Okay, so welcome to our call here. It's uh, what what what's the date? October ten twelve. Ooh, it's October twelfth, two thousand sixteen. Um, and this week we're going to be talking about SEO and measuring value. And William, how do you say your last name, Will? Walchak. Walchak is going to be running it, and he and Tina run a company in Canada called Highlight. And and uh, I'll give you information later on how to check that out. And this is what you guys do, right? This is your core business is to help companies with SEO. Absolutely. And there's a little bit of, uh, I, I think kind of um, snake oil when it comes to SEO or at least our perception of it. I think it gets a, a bad rap because of how other companies do it. So I'm really eager to kind of hear what you have to say about it and how you can help elevate our SEO game. And so I wanna remind everybody, we do these calls uh, every single Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And every other week, we alternate between me hosting and somebody like Will stepped up kind of last minute. And I encourage other people in our group who have an expertise in some area to write up a little description of what they want to talk about so that they can host one of these calls as well. I think it's good for our community to, to learn more about each other and also to just learn from each other. And I see some wonderful things happening already in terms of collaboration. I think Aaron Pearson and Al Martinez are working together. And I hope other people who need help with CRM or um, inbound marketing will work with Sean Henry, who did a fabulous job. Okay. And the first Monday of every single month at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we will do an open agenda. Welcome to the community, family, neighborhood. And that's what we're, we're doing. And now I'm about to turn it over to Will and Tina. Will sent me this photo last night. I had to cut it out so the you know, it wasn't a perfect cutout because Tina's a very blonde woman against a white background. That was not an easy one. I think they're trying to test my Photoshop skills. Damn that. <laughs> you did well. All right. So there's a little bit funky on the top, but whatever. I was like, 1.30, I got to be done with this now. All right. And this is uh, their website. It's Highlight, and it's H-I-I-L-I-T-E dot com. Is that correct? Correct. And they have a very nice site. And did you guys recently redesign your site or no? We're constantly adding, changing, moving things around. Uh, so not recently, but uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different the next time you check on it as well. Okay, that's cool. Maybe that's part of the SEO game. Who knows? Maybe we're teasing into something. But I remember checking out Tina's site when she first contacted me via YouTube, and it looks a little different than back then, but maybe I'm just imagining things. I see too many websites as it is. Okay, now I'm going to stop this portion of it. I'm going to stop sharing this part. And now I'm going to promote you, Will. You are promoted. Probably. Okay. All right. So I'm going to find my share button here. Let's go. It's right with, at the uh, bottom in the middle. Got it. Let me know if you can see my screen. We can see it. Perfect. All right. So uh, you know what? You touched on a really, really good thing. And, and, and you, you mentioned that um, SEO is snake oil. Uh, the thing that we always start our, our meetings with or, or um, kind of our, our talks about it, we say this isn't a black box. This isn't something that we keep putting things in and, and magically users appear or magically leads appear. Um, so we really kind of approach it from let's demystify this. Let's make this. Uh, let's show you how this actually works. So what I'm going to show you guys is very much what we show a lot of our clients. I don't want to go into the details about how to format certain things or how to build certain links. There's a ton of, there are a ton of resources on the internet uh, that already do that, that you guys, uh, that, but what I really wanted to do is relate this to designers and show you how you can use SEO and some of these, uh, um, some of these tools that I'm going to show you uh, to gain a competitive edge. One thing, uh, if anyone has any questions, please jump in at any point. I'm more than happy to, to talk about uh, any of these aspects at length or, or kind of change the direction of the presentation as we go. Great. And I'll be taking notes and I'll be giving you some feedback because our group never says yeah. anything. And it's, it's, it's comforting to uh, talk to the screen for an hour and a half. Can I, can I put people on the spot and just like, hey. It's your Aaron, show, man. You, you run can... it the way you want. Yes. All right. <laughs> just, uh, we're like, <laughs> keep it down. Keep it. Okay. This is the, this, you know what, this is actually what really excites me. Um, so whenever we have these meetings with clients, I'm like, Hey, look, this is, you know, Tina makes designs that are beautiful. I make sure they convert. And here is how we measure that value. It's almost like beauty and the beast oh. right there. I'm the beast. <laughs> You're the social so, SEO beast. 
<laughs> a little bit. So yeah, okay. um, I, I've got a couple quotes sprinkled within, and, and uh, here's one. They're all attributed in the appendix, so if you want to, to find the source, uh, you can see it there. Uh, but what gets measured gets managed. Uh, designing for the sake of design is what we're competing against here. I'm not sure what everyone has in their market, uh, but what we need to do is make sure that um, whatever we build actually provide brings leads. So it's not just it's not just design for the sake of design. Here's the, here's this pretty picture. We actually know what's resonating with someone. We know it's it's hitting an audience in <clears throat> in a way that we wanted to, and then we can measure that and report that back to the client and say. Here's what we did. Here's how effective it was. And then we correlate that to the revenue and say, here's how much money you made from it. So it becomes a really, really powerful and, and interesting tool. Does anyone have any questions? All right, let's get into, let's go, uh, quickly cover the agenda. So I wanted to do an introduction and basics, then uh, tell you why you should care as a designer, uh, why it is important, I'll show you guys a couple tools, kind of where do where you want to start and where you want to keep running, and then uh, how you can pivot. I'll give you an example of a site we just did. Uh, we launched it about a month ago, and I want to show you guys the results. And this is for a small market, uh, and, and I'll point it out and I'll show you guys the website. Uh, but I'll show you how how quickly you can get those results, and then I'll conclude. Take any questions. I'll aim to be done at around nine o'clock. So introduction, what is SEO? Um, so it, all it stands for is search engine optimization. Uh, realistically, what Google is in the business of is providing the best possible results. If they were a search engine that didn't provide what you were looking for, you'd switch away to Bing or Yahoo or DuckDuckGo Duck, Duck, or something else. There are a whole bunch of search engines out there. What, uh, what makes Google really good is it finds results that really matter to you. If you want the basics, there's a link, uh, beginner's guide to, to SEO. Um, but I, like I said, I'm going to try to relate this for you guys so it's actually something that you as designers can incorporate into your business. So like I said, we're, we're, it's very much uh, practical information that every designer and business owner should know. All right, let's get into basics. So one of the things I always say to Tina, and I hope she gets a chuckle out of it still, is don't overthink this. This is not, like I said, this is not snake oil. This is not a black box. This is, you know, really search engines are in the business of providing the best possible results. There's a caveat there, and that is you can buy the top spot, which is a fun way to go. And then you can measure very quickly, did I design something that works? You can drive a ton of traffic uh, and say, okay, I did convert, here are the percentages that I'm looking at, here is how many calls I got, or here's how many form fill-outs or email subscriptions. Uh, but if you, if you do it organically, that traffic is effectively free. So huge ban. Um, so one of the things that's gonna be important is keywords and how to find them. Links, or the notion of linking in and out, I don't think it should be strange to anyone, and I'll show you guys how social media really fits into that. Uh, popularity. So what makes uh, the Huffington Post better than um, our website? What makes, you know, how do you measure that? So there's this notion of page authority and domain authority. And I'll, uh, I'll show you guys a tool that actually measures it for you and lets you know which, one, which links you want and which ones you want to link out to. This notion of original content. Um, one thing is extremely important. Don't copy and paste content. Don't just... Uh, I found this interesting. If you don't attribute it, if you don't link to it properly, Google looks at your site and says, look, this guy just wholesale copied everything from here. Punish him severely and your rankings will drop. And then this notion of metadata. Um, I'm not sure how technical of a term it is for the audience, but I'll describe exactly what uh, metadata is. Any questions so far? So far, so good. Okay. No one, no one's chiming in. I can't see the video screen, so I can't even gauge whether people are falling asleep during this. I'd love to see, like, <laughs> do, do you have that, like, on your presentation where you can see what the, uh, uh, interact, maybe I should just lean over to Tina's screen and see if anyone's uh, checking their phones. <laughs> on you know what you do is Tina monitors the room and gives you a weird signal. 
and then she got <laughs> a piece of paper and handed Actually, I'll get her. I'll get her to sit beside me because then I can actually see. Whenever you do a presentation in front of a live room, you can see people's faces. Yeah. Uh, so when when someone scrunches their forehead, you're like, let me let me explain that. Um, I'm doing my MBA right now, so I have a lot of. Uh, so we're doing a ton of presentations, um, and it's 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 really neat to to. Uh, be able to direct a room and say, okay, we're going to close down everyone's laptops, pay attention. This is, you know, it's only five minutes. Uh, I can't do that here because clearly you are all on your computers, but uh, I'd love to. All right. Um, okay, I can see everyone's faces now. Perfect. So uh, one of the things that I like to say is everything communicates. I don't care whether it's an image. I don't care whether it's the title tag of an image. I don't care whether it's uh, the way you describe the image um, or how you, or the alt text behind it. And all that is is just a little bit of information that when putting a, 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 an image up on the internet, you actually say, here's what this is. So everything communicates. So uh, let me just define metadata very quickly. Uh, the, the message here is you don't need to be a nerd to understand this. Uh, I really want to make sure that this gets related to, to designers. Uh, so metadata is da just data that describes other data. So as I just mentioned, file names, descriptions, page titles, link titles, um, and a few other things that we can go into. But these are the ones that, uh, that we find really, really important. Any questions? All right. So far, so good, man. Whoa. Perfect. I know. And they just dropped. Indeed. So here's an example of how, how metadata can be used. Uh oh, hold on, hold on. Sean oh. has a question. OK, go ahead. So uh, I understand metadata and meta descriptions. Uh, meta, meta description is like the uh, the description of the page, uh, and yep. sometimes that's automatically pulled by Google, right? But um, one of the things that I've I've heard and I've said, but I don't really know what it means, is meta tags are less relevant than they used to be. What what's a meta tag? So a meta tag or meta description is typically what they're referring to. Is the information that you provide specifically for search engines. Um, if you have a, an SEO plugin in a WordPress installation, I can show you guys where this is later on. But essentially, Google says, look, I don't fully trust just what you're telling me about this page. I want to dig deeper. So um, this is where title tags make sense. This is where the content that you wrap around images or, um, or, or, or other media makes uh, has to has to be relevant um, so just going back to that comment everything communicates you need to make sure that everything is consistent so it's not just here is an image or here is a website i want to be found as uh you know the best designer in la what are you doing to be and communicate to search engines that hey i'm actually the best designer in la here is work that you'd expect from me here is content that you'd expect from me. Here's a video that you'd expect from me. Here is uh, links that you'd expect from the best designer in LA. How do you exactly do that? Does that answer your question? Um, I, 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 I think, no, uh, I don't understand the, the difference between, because um, I, I know what you're saying like metadata is important, but like, is there a difference between metadata and meta tags? So like, Metadata would be uh, if I write a blog post, um, the author is Sean, and so Google's recognizing that meta, that metadata. But what's the difference yep. between that and then specifically like uh, what a meta tag is? is so, so the, what what Google what Google has said we're not using anymore. I think since two thousand nine is meta descriptions. Um, meta tags are HTML tags within your content that say. Here are the keywords that I want to be found under. Google is no longer looking at those. Metadata in itself is actually just certain amounts, uh, certain data um, that describes things. It's a really nice, cohesive way of saying it. So to, to your question, uh, it's not important. Meta Perfect. tags are not important. Meta descriptions are not important. The way you describe your data is extremely important. Does that make sense? Yes, that answers it. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So here is an example of, uh, of that. So here is the egg. We have a, we use, um, we use this little ostrich in a lot of our, in a lot of our communications. Um, 
for us, it communicates doing things fast and, and being fast and being agile. Where it all starts is the egg. So say, for example, you're a, uh, you're a company that, that, that sells ostrich eggs. I wanted to make this as obscure of a reference as possible. How do you tell Google? Google isn't an optical search. It doesn't really look at your information and say, okay, I recognize that this oval thing is an egg. You need to tell it. So how do you do that? Title it. Here's something as simple. So every time you see a website that has image1.jpg or uh, DSC underscore 15,000, because someone took 15,000 pictures on their digital camera, uh, that's a missed opportunity for something. Google looks at it and says, okay, if someone's looking for DSC underscore 15,000, I will show them this one. If someone's looking for ostrich eggs, here's one that I know is actually likely an ostrich egg. <clears throat> What's another thing? Page titles. So we are an ostrich egg company. This will sound all like really ridiculous, but 99% of the internet gets this wrong, especially small businesses. Uh, they don't describe their websites accurately enough. So if you hover over or if you do a search, every time a website says home, to me that like that just that, that, that drives me absolutely nuts. Home. To whom? Uh, what exactly do you do? Are you a are you a garage door repair company? Are you a graphic designer? Are you a video maker? Are you whatever? Title your stuff properly. Unbelievably important. This is that content side of things. So uh, just to go back to the whole metadata thing, it's not just, you know, here is a tag that we can insert. It's actually, let's describe everything that's linked to it. So uh, clients looking for ostrich eggs, here's this notion of linking. I'm going to link here. This is an example of internal linking. So consider that this is a page. Here is a, a link to this image uh, from the content. It becomes critically important when you start getting links from more reputable sources. If you can get the Huffington Post to tell the world that you are the guy to get ostrich eggs from, suddenly your credibility goes up. Um, that's where the notion of page authority and domain authority uh, come in. If you're just starting off and you want to get recognized for something, you need to have the experts tell you that you're actually good at that. That's where linking comes into play. And that's also where social media comes in. It's just a really, really fast way of building a ton of those links. So if someone says something about you and says, Chris Doe is the guy to go for the business of design, that's awesome. If a thousand people say it, that's extra awesome. Uh, if a million people start saying it because 10 friends shared with 10 of their friends with 10 of their friends, um, that suddenly becomes unbelievably powerful and that's how experts get created. Then you can use Google Plus and you can say, okay, it's not only, I'm not only interested in pictures of ostriches, I actually have videos of these things. Um, here is me showing you how well our ostriches are treated. Here is how good this is. It's just another bit of information that communicates. Make sure it's titled properly, make sure it's, it's uh, tagged properly, make sure it's linked properly. Then you can look at Twitter um, and then YouTube. Hey, I will. I have a question for you, yes, sir. Now I notice here. Now, typically in the past, I would just have a page, and it would just have all the information that I was thinking about ostrich eggs, including the video, the images, and I don't have a page that links into my an internal link. Having a page like this and linking internally does that help Google find you? Um, so, th all of the factors that go into ranking you constantly change. One thing I'll, I'll, I can send out a link later on, but essentially what you're looking for is um, Google signals or SEO signals. Um, those are all the factors in their importance. And somewhere in that list, completely depending on the year or the time, um, internal linking always appears. So it is a factor. Um, how important it is, is, uh, is arguable, but it definitely should be there. So just going back a couple slides where I said everything communicates, take every opportunity you can to communicate effectively. So internal linking, absolutely. So if you've written one blog post that talks about, you know, Photoshop for you, um, if you reference, say, okay, here's how we did 
uh, masks. Here's how we did brushes. Here's how we did uh, editing. All of a sudden, your content becomes far more co far more cohesive. Great. And I just want to mention something because that seems to be consistent with what uh, Ben Burns told me. Ben, I know you're on the on the line as well. So he helped us kind of re kind of configure our site, the site that's about to launch in a couple of weeks or days. I'm excited uh, to do that, right, Ben? Or yeah, things right in line. Yeah, Keep going. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. If there's anything that you disagree with, Ben, uh, this is a constantly shifting landscape. Uh, I never want to give myself this title of guru or expert uh, because we're constantly wrong. And part of what's important here is measuring and saying, okay, this is working. This is not working. Um, we're, you know, like this isn't a black box. So we get to actually look into this. There are a ton of white papers and research that comes out. But we get to test that within our own environment and say, this is working, this is not working. So if Ben, if you found something different, please chime in. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Any questions about the ostrich egg? Yeah, real real quick. Um, where we have the, the title of ostrich-egg.jpg there. Yeah. A lot of CMS systems will append or prepend um, data to that file name. Would does that affect it? Like in WordPress, if you were to upload ostrich egg, you know, at the end of it, it'll put the resolution of it. You know, whether it's you know six hundred by three hundred or you know whatever thumbnail sizes it it automatically generates. Yeah, is that a detriment effect yeah. to you know like a like a Google Google image search per se? And that's where you would use you know the alt title data and the image tag to overcome that. Or I, I guess I guess the question is if if the the file name is, you know, manipulated in some way to where it's kind of unreadable. Does Google then fall back to the alt title tag? It doesn't really. Um, having a properly titled image is critically important. Um, okay. And you're absolutely right. A lot of CMSs will say, okay, you want the 300 by 300 version because you want to use a thumbnail somewhere. And it'll say ostrich-egg-300x300.jpg. Right. Um, you're essentially diluting the message. It's the, 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 one of the things we also look at, we have clients who come to us and say, okay, I want to be, um, I want to be a designer. I want to be a videographer. I want to be a photographer. I want to be a painter. I want to be a sculptor. I want to be whatever. Um, you're, you're, you know, this is marketing 101. Uh, if you're trying to be everything to everyone, you're nothing to no one. Right, so this very same thing applies here. Look, if it's just an ostrich egg, size it properly. Don't rely on your content management system to resize it, and just leave it as ostrich-egg.jpg. You can use it; it's easy. Uh, if it's not critically important, like if you're just writing blog posts and you already have a following, sure, absolutely, do it. Uh, we try not to do that, or we do that as little as possible, uh, because we're 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 diluting that message. Does that answer your question? Got it. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So here's why you should care. Uh, first, this Chris business of design, we love what you're doing. So we just wanted to add our little thing and, and be available for any questions in the future. So we want to help designers and we want to help creatives uh, get out there. Uh, it's If you do this well, it helps you get work. It helps you get jobs. It helps you get clients. Uh, when you do a search for web company in our market, uh, this is where we are. Uh, this is organic results. So this is just one of those things. And we, we have great reviews. Uh, this is one of those things where whenever I say everything communicates, you can look at us or look at the next web company. Um, and, and you can say, okay, I'm going to at least give them a call first. So, you know, this is, this is what gets a ton of traffic to us. While we're a marketing agency, uh, we've found that a lot of our leads come from web design or website design. So we've pivoted our content. And, and Chris, I think this is very similar to you. That you can be the best designer, but if your if your clients are looking for a web designer and you're not showing up anywhere, you may as well not be there. Um, so next part is what we want to do is make sure we get noticed. So we start building a following. So this is where that consistency comes across. Uh, and then build your brand so you can charge more. Well, Chris, go ahead. Yep. Is your slide stuck? It's still on the egg. 
Oh, it's, ah. Oh, no, it's I, I see it. Mine okay, is not on. updating. You guys see it? Uh, I'm I see it. Cool. Mine isn't stuck. Oh, excuse me. All right. Perfect. I'm going to kill this screen recording. Okay, you guys keep rocking then. No, no, no. Yeah, so... Okay. Any questions about that? I just want to make sure that you know this isn't boastful. What I what I want to show off is you know what we do gets us into the right place for the right kind of searches, um, and this t brings in a ton of traffic. And we can look at some of our tools and say, okay, this is how much our organic ranking has grown. This is how much our uh, social traffic has grown. This is how how many more people are finding us under these terms. Chris, are you seeing it properly now? No, but it's just me. No, you no, no. Go, it's, 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 I, I, I want to make sure. Should I restart the presentation? Just reshare it? I can okay, see it. Hold yeah. On. Just want to make sure. Stop the sharing and then reshare. Let's Please. try this. Absolutely. There we go. I just see it stopped. All right. It's refreshing now. Now go and do back to sharing. There we go. And I want to take this opportunity to ask Tina to monitor the chat window just for fun. Other Somebody might happening. be making fun of you. Who knows? I'm sure they are. Uh, All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you're seeing this now? Yeah. So why, this, should, this, why you should care. This is that Perfect. So this is uh, the screen. So uh, you need all tags, uh, but not what helps rank you. So, so she can just read the question to you if she finds oh, that it's important or she can answer it. That'll, you guys are sure. a team, right? Absolutely. We're just, yeah. 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 Okay. No, uh, you're newlyweds. I get it. <laughs> so, okay. Does that does that answer? I guess does does that does anyone have any questions about this? So, um, how yeah, are I, we can I, relate and why you should care? I have a quick question. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Fire away, man. Okay. So, when it comes to you're talking about alt tags and metadata and inbound links and outbound links, and I understand that. Um, and I don't know if you're going to get into it later, but the measuring part of it, right? So if you guys are ranking number one, I'm sure that that's because of several variables. How are you able to analyze which specific um, action you're taking is delivering those results? So we do a ton of stuff. So we make constant cha uh, constant changes. Uh, we we're, we're far more active on a number of other social platforms. Uh, we're constantly adding images. It's a cumulative effect. Uh, it's not like, you know, there's a, one of the, one of those important signals. So I mentioned this massive list of, of, of signals that Google looks into and says, this is how I'm going to rank you. Uh, one of them is, um, how active you are, how much stuff you're posting, how many followers you have. Um, so it's, it's very much a cumulative effect. It's not just, I have one image that describes who I am. I expect to be at the top. It's, it's a battle for, for first position. Do you um, and your comp go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just going to say your competition is doing everything they can to uh, to to climb to the top. So Dude. you need to be as active as possible. Absolutely. Do you have a hard time communicating that with clients? Because I feel like so many clients are just quantitatively driven and they just want a certain spot, but not necessarily the work that goes into it with content marketing and inbound marketing and being active in social media. Do you have a hard time communicating that to them on how that happens rather than just SEO. Absolutely. Uh, it's partially because, uh, Chris, you, you, you got it exactly right. It is the snake oil formula that other companies are like, you know, we constantly get inundated with emails, get to number one position or SEO services out of India for $99. Uh, so, you know, in, in that sense, um, we're, we're almost distancing ourselves from the term SEO and we're using the term content marketing. Even our package says SEO and content marketing. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Hey, Stephanie. Um, I need things really simple for me to understand. So, and I find a lot of our customers need it very simple too. And one of the things I tell people is we get, we get our clients to the top of Google. So instead of using the term SEO, uh, formulate it to something that they can understand. And then that starts um, getting them to ask questions and, and they want to learn more. And then that's when you bring them into the number side of things and you show them. So it's an uh, easy transition when you, when you describe it to them in simple terms. Does that make sense? No, that makes sense. It's really, I think, getting at the push of content marketing rather than just 
hey, let me just do a couple of things to your site, change a couple alt tags, meta descriptions, and there you go. So it's really selling them on the, the back end of the work. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, what I guess what's, what helps us in this, in this battle is showing off results and saying, here, you know, we we're working with 60 some odd clients on a regular, on a, on a regular basis. Um, here's how we've helped this person become the number one hair salon. Here's how we help this person become the best dentist or the, the highest ranked dentist. Here's how we've helped uh, an optometry office or a car garage or whatever. Uh, we get to look at, we get to show them and say, look, this is not an immediate thing. This is not something you make one tweak you're at the very top. It's a constant, it's, it's jockeying for that first position and you need to be active and you need to be consistent. So I got to jump in guys real quick too, because, um, I've been kind of jaded with SEO. I've, I mean, personally, I've gotten to the point where I've just kind of given up on it. And, and a lot of it had to do with like, you know, like you, like you mentioned, like I have, I feel like I have no control over it. Like I could do everything with the best intentions. I could pay a company a lot of money to do it. And then Google changes some sort of thing in their algorithm. And it just like botches everything that I've done, or it, it doesn't, <clears throat> I don't know. It doesn't, it, it's just like one of those things to me. That's like, it's like so far unattainable. I don't even really think about it anymore. And I focus on more of the actual content marketing side rather than the organic side. Um, so I don't know, for me, it's just something that I haven't really invested a lot in maybe because I just, I don't know, I haven't had the time, but I, I don't know if there's other people in here that are, that are similar where it's like SEO is kind of this thing. that's like way up here that you don't really know about and, uh, and it's constantly changing. You really have like no control over it. Um, so I don't know. That's just, I don't think it really adds much to the conversation, but that's kind of how I felt about it for the past few years. And that's why I've stopped like trying to keep up with the SEO Joneses, you know? Yeah. Uh, one thing, there are no shortcuts. I, I don't care whether it's in, uh, you know, whether it's in, in, in design, in business or in life. Uh, there are people who do, uh, there's a black hat approach or kind of the, the shortcut approach to a lot of these things with search engines. You can say, okay, we know that uh, the linking is extremely important. I can go, go out and buy a thousand really high value links. Google is just going back to it. Google is in the business of providing really, really good results. So they're constantly on the lookout for people who are trying to mess with their equation. When they find you, they're like, okay, was this, you know, is this, is this accidental or is this intentional? If it's intentional, you're not the kind of company they want to represent. You're clearly doing something. You're exactly, you're not legit. They're, they're, they're actually going to punish you heavily. So this is an example of original content. If you go out and copy articles from the Huffington Post because it reads well and it gets a ton of followers, and Google looks at it and says, you've wholesale copied this without attribution, um, you're going to get punished. So the, what, I, what, I want to, what I want to really get out of this is just change your focus a little bit and say, Look, when designing and when posting these things, let's keep some of these things, some of these principles uh, in mind. And I'll show you how to measure them so you don't get into a situation where SEO becomes snake oil in the future. It's just another tool in your designer tool chest. All right. So why it's important. I hope that answers your question. Here. All right. He's nodding. He's nodding. I see. Perfect. So why it's important. Um, the field of dreams approach to design is dead. Um, if you build it, they won't come. If you uh, design the most beautiful website, so what? If no one's finding it, it doesn't matter. If you build the best possible product package, if you design the nicest poster and hang it up, hang it up in your basement, no one cares. You need to make sure it's it's found. You need to make sure it's actually making a difference. Uh, you not only have to design with a purpose graphically, but you need to make sure there are those results. And then you can go back to the client and say, here's the poster that we made and here's how much traffic it got you. Here is the banner ad that we created. Here is the image that we made. Here's the social media post that we made. Now here's the 20,000 uh, people who clicked that link, followed back to your website and signed up. Here are the people who called. Here's how, how we measure that. And there's a really good tool for it and it's free. I'm going to show you. Uh, here we go. This is Tina's contribution to my to my slide here. Uh, if you build it, <laughs> nobody coming. 
it's a design, a design with results in mind. So what gets measured gets done. Um, one of those nice little uh, quotes that I came across. So tools to start. Um, first, we need to know what people are searching for. So say, for example, you're a, um, you want to title yourself designer or, I don't know, a Photoshop expert. Um, if no one in your market is searching for Photoshop expert and they're just looking for a graphic designer or they lo they're looking for um, a photographer and you're the king of canons and that's the direction you're going in, those are all of the search engine, uh, all of the, the keywords that you're using, it's not helping you. So there's actually a really good tool that Google provides and says, okay, here's how many times people are searching for graphic designer in, um, in Phoenix, Arizona, or graphic designers, or um, for, for us, for example, uh, we worked with a, with a hair salon down the street, and there was a huge difference between number of searches for hair salon and hair salons. So whenever we describe that client, we're like, okay, 10 times, more, 10 times more people were searching for hair salons instead of hair salon. Let's change that tiny little bit and let's show up under hair salons. So for us, like I mentioned, um, we were marketing agency. We were getting, we were number one for Kelowna marketing agency. Um, it didn't matter. It turned out that the amount of searches that people were doing for web design, because to them, a marketing agency is jargon. They're not looking for that. They're looking for a website. Then we get to have a conversation with them and say, you're not just looking for a website. You're looking for a marketing platform. The website is just the hub of it, the, the cornerstone. Let us show you how it's going to work. Let us show you how this actually gets measurable results in your business. Let us show you how we can triple your traffic. And this is one of the conversations we constantly have and we have results to prove it. We can triple people's traffic in a single, in a single year and we've done it, but it gets far more interesting when we correlate it to their, um, to, their, uh, to their revenue. And when it's tied one to one, for that person, we've tripled their revenue in a single year and they were an established business. So just by doing that. So we measure that within, uh, within analytics. Uh, the Search Console, or formerly Webmaster Tools, is a really good place to get. This may be a little bit on the geeky side. I'm not sure how people uh, here want to actually, uh, how, how deep they want to, to dig into these things. Uh, a really simple tool that gives to just takes a look at your website or your landing page and gives you feedback instantly is something called HubSpot Grader. You can put it in. I'll, I'll show you guys uh, a result. So it'll, it'll just tell you here are the keywords. Make, make sure your descriptions are done. Your yeah, I was just going to say, someone put their website uh, in the group chat, and we'll we'll have a look at it right now. Any yeah. volunteers? Anyone who wants to just a quick uh, peek at their website. Um, there's another tool. Yeah, just that we like. Perfect. Wonderful. Um, we'll see exactly what you guys... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll put that up. Um, then uh, Moz is pretty much, uh, there are a couple links to them already. One of them is uh, SEO for beginners. Uh, they actually have a really, really good tool there. And uh, that one gives you all of the links that you have to, well, first it gives you a score of page authority and domain authority. So how well, essentially how reputable you are on the internet. And then it shows you all of the links to your website from more reputable sources. So going back to an example of a dentist, uh, say for example, you're a new dentist that opens up in town. Uh, Google's like, okay, first, do I really know that you're in town? So this is where you say, uh, let's add a Google local listing. Okay, now we're, we have an address. Now we have, then let's get some links from other sources. Uh, you can have the Chamber of Commerce. They're more reputable. Suddenly you appear as a, as a more reputable dentist. If you start getting listed by um, the state level um, uh, dental governing bodies. All of a sudden, they're like, okay, this guy is actually, okay, this dental practice is actually legitimate. If they're listed by now, uh, by news sources, here's a dentist that's making a difference. All of a sudden, you start uh, leaping again. So, anyway, so this is where you get to look at those links and measure, okay, the Huffington Post is really good. Um, the free directory that I've listed a thousand, you know, or a thousand free directories aren't worth a single, you know, aren't aren't worth anything. Hold on, there's a question here. There we go. 
the new Moz, I'm not sure who said that, is powerful as well. So take a look in the chat. There's a nice contribution. Oh, Chris, there we go. Um, so Google Keyword Planner. Um, who, I'm just going to, you can just do a show of hands here. Who's actually interested in seeing Google Keyword Planner in action? One, two, three. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'll switch gears and quickly jump in and uh, do something like that. Uh, can someone contribute a city that they're in? I just want to know. Uh, we're going to do this. Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Fresno, California. Fresno. Okay. Uh, there we go. Because a live demonstration, nothing ever goes wrong. So, yeah. So all I did is did a Google search for keyword planner. Um, someone throw out uh, a niche that they want to be identified for. Brand strategy. Brand strategy. Perfect. Okay. So what other terms are people? Do you think people are using? Like brand strategy is very much marketing jargon, right? Are your clients looking for brand strategy? I don't know. You tell me. Let's take a look. What other things uh, could they be describing you as whenever they describe brand strategy? Branding. Could it be business strategy, branding. Yeah, brand consulting. Brand consulting. Okay. Like reputation management, possibly. There, hey, what Sean, about brand? What your about microphone brand and speaker is giving us feedback because every time I unmute you or you unmute yourself, we get this, I hear your feedback. So I don't know if you can change your mic setup or something because obviously I want you to participate. Okay, Google Keyword Planner tool is, oh, there we go. All right, so, um, so brand strategy, branding, uh, brand audits, any other ones? Um, do, you know, is this, is this just to do, go ahead. Seems better, Sean. Better, Sean. Okay, uh, branding agency. Branding agency. So I'm just making some notes because if I don't, I will forget everything. And the market we're going to look at is, you know what, we're going to go with Fresno, Chris, if you don't mind. No problem. Perfect. What about graphic designer? Graphic designer? Um, well, graphic designer, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at it. So uh, what, you know, our intuition was, or, or I guess what we learned from for, 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 uh, for, uh, on ourselves is um, that whole marketing agency. People aren't looking for a marketing agency. It sounds too expensive for a small business. It's not, it, it doesn't sound like it's anything that will relate to their business. So we just showed up under the tool that they're looking for, and then we get the opportunity to educate them when they actually, uh, when they come in. So here is this. We're going to look at the market of, there it is. Fresno, California. Now we get to put in a whole bunch of so brand, brand strategy, branding. Someone wanted logo design agency. Logo design. Okay. You know what? Let's agency. Okay. So I'll show you guys some fun things here. So uh, we're gonna go so uh, brand branding, brand consulting. Brand audit, branding agency, uh, graphic designer, logo design, logo designer, logo design agency. So what this is going to come back with is here is... Uh, Let's go come back. Fresno, California, add. There we go. Uh, that's going to come back with how often are these things actually being searched? Come on, Google. Okay. Let's try this again. Remove. Save. There we go. So Google comes back and says, how often are these things being searched? How many average monthly searches are there? Um, for these results. So there we go. So logo design is actually being searched uh, on average 90 times uh, compared to branding agency, brand audits, brand consultant, logo design agency has 
received zero searches in the last month. So <laughs> you can be you can be the best damn logo design agency in the world, but if that's what you're showing up for, you're going to get a hundred percent of zero searches. So logo design is probably what your what people are searching for. That's a perfect score, though, man. I want to be a hundred percent. But there you go. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can have a hundred percent of zero revenue. Um, that's uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's a goal you want to. Uh, yeah, that's that's where you. That's like be. running home and saying, "Dad, I got an A. It's a one-legged A." Exactly. <laughs> there you go. So here's uh, so here's a really good example, right? So uh, are people looking for a branding agency or are they looking for a logo design? And at that point, they're going to come in and say, "Look, we make the best damn logos." But here's what you're really looking for. You're really looking for a brand. And here's why it makes a difference. Here's the consistency you get. Here are the results that you get from the consistency. Here is how beautiful your business can be represented. Here's how effective you look when that's done properly. Um, so that's your pivot, so, huh? So you go for the highest search term, and then you pivot out of it. You create content around local design, and then you pivot into brand strategy. I wouldn't say it's a pivot. It's essentially go to what people think they're they're looking for. And then you get to not necessarily upsell them, but educate them and say, you know, you're looking for a logo, but you're but what you need is a brand. Okay, right? so I have a question for you, Will. Sure. I, I don't want people looking for a logo designer to find us or a logo design because that's just too much of the riffraff. You were saying before you had to find a term that didn't seem expensive. I actually want the opposite. I want to filter out all this stuff because even clients that are qualified to call us can't afford us. For sure. Chris, um, I, I have a, a, a hunch that because it's Fresno, California, these are the results. But if you did your area, it'd be completely different. This it was, yes. I, I kind of suspected that this would be the case because nobody, it seems in Fresno, would be searching for a brand design agency, even the really uh, big companies that can afford a brand design agency, they don't know to call it that. They would right. be looking for a logo design. So here is Santa Monica. Um, and you're, you're absolutely right. There is, uh, this is very market specific. Different markets have adapted differently. Uh, and what the lexicon they use within every one of them will be slightly different. So um, you have two options there, Chris. One is educate your audience and say, you know, branding design is what everybody needs. Branding design is what, but take a look at, uh, you know, what your audience, what your market is. Are you looking only at Santa Monica or are you actually looking at the United States? United States. Exactly. So now let's take a look. We can actually say our market is this. Uh, here we go. So logo design agency has 70 searches. Logo design has uh, 74,000 branding, graphic designer. Um, so one of the things that we can also do is we can educate the clients and say, look, if you're looking for, if you have a budget of less than 20,000, we're not the right fit. Sorry, Tina has something to contribute here. No, I was just going to ask Chris about um, your clients. Are they savvy enough to understand what branding is? I think so. Okay. I'll tell you how I figured out that we want to be known as a brand strategy agency. I basically just typed that into Google and saw the search results. And I'm just applying my own logic here. It's, it's like, if I'm looking for that, what are the results? And everybody that I want to compete against shows up in that list. That's how I chose that. So you're competing with them because your competitors show up on the list, but is that what your actual customer is searching? I hope so because those guys charge a million dollars to do uh, an, a, you know, a brand. I think they're wrong. Well, well they, could, they could be wrong. <laughs> here's the thing, right? So here's okay. where you actually, whenever you sit down with a client, listen to the language they, they use. Really listen to, you know, we, every client that comes in, every new client, how did you find us? Uh, Google. Okay, what did you search? Like, and and I, I may not actually use the terms. What did you type in exactly? But their the language that they use with you is very very indicative of what is trending in the market. Uh, here's what you know. Th this is a business owner. They're looking. They're talking to their friends. By the time they've arrived at your door, they've already had a dozen conversations about this. They 
took the temperature of the market and are, are kind of reporting it back to you. So for this is how we learn, you know, website design is the place where we ought to be. Does that okay, make sense? Okay, so here, I'll prove it to you right now. Sure, okay. absolutely. I just typed into Google logo design. Is that what we said? Is the number one search results? Yes. Okay, the top four paid ads are a custom logo for $45, $44, $49, number one rated design, you know, all these kinds of things. Then you get to organic. Logogenie.net. 99 designs, free logo services, design manic tick, creative block, 65 logo design tips. You see what I'm sure. saying? It's like absolutely. That's nowhere where I want to be. Fiverr, sure. so you, deluxe. So, so absolutely. So you, get to de- so you get to design. So you get to uh, decide that. So someone mm-hmm. threw out logo design agency, and I just wanted to put that into the mix and show right. you how many additional results. But that's that very not clear. Where you needed to be right. Right. So you're, you're absolutely right. So if, if, yeah, if someone's just looking for, you know, the 99 designs logo and you're coming up and you're trying to sell them a hundred thousand dollar or a million dollar brand, you're right. Fundamental disconnect. You're never going to, you're never going to make that work. So, but this is what we keep monitoring in our market. We keep doing searches. We keep looking at keywords our competitors are using and we're trying to figure out, do we need to pivot into something else? Like yeah. right now. It, you know, so SEO came became a huge thing that people were searching for. They have no idea what it is. Uh, they they they're told that they need it. So we want to show up as um, SEO company or Kelowna SEO company. So mm-hmm. we've started moving some of our content in that direction. So we start getting ranked for it. Perfect. But, but I think to your point, though, to your point, uh, this this was illustrated so crystal clear to me having one extra word in there takes three zeros out of your search results. Absolutely. It's crazy. And, but these are the tools that we use to measure that and report back and say, here's where you should be. And here's why mm-hmm. and here's your audience. And, and a client understands that they trust Google. So you can even pull up the tool and say, it's not just our intuition about this. We had an intuition. Uh, maybe it was wrong, but here's what's right. And here's why we know this for a fact. Someone else was saying something. Yeah, well, I just want to throw yeah. something in there. A lot of this um, conversation is kind of surrounding defining the company and saying yeah. we want to be found for this term that defines us. Yeah. That's a very, very small piece of the uh, customer journey. That's somebody that has cash in hand and they're looking, they're typing in the deliverable or something like that and they're ready to buy, right? So it's very small. Um, and I think that these tools that you're using, and you're probably doing this already, um, we can nurture those leads in the rest of the buying cycle. When somebody maybe is already working with an agency um, and they just are looking for something funny because they're frustrated with their agency and you write a post about um, how why branding agencies suck, you know, mm-hmm. something like that, where um, we can maximize certain search terms that may not be Um, Hey, we are a branding agency or a web design firm that it's, it's more along the lines of creating other content surrounding um, what you do to kind of like raise awareness um, in in people's minds. Absolutely. So this is where content marketing comes up. So one of the companies that we work with here is they're called plan B. Um, So I've just got them up on the screen here. Uh, One of the hairstyle trends or, Things that are that people can be searching for is called balayage hair. Unless you're unless you're a female, I see someone smiling there. Uh, you can do the same search for denim hair, for example. Um, will show up because we have content around that. So here is our organic result. Here is our first organic result for uh, this person. Uh, we will probably show up in a couple other places, but. Uh, so this relates, so if someone's looking for something very specific, if you have content around it, here we go. Here's a really good example, uh, denim hair. Turns out this is a huge thing in our market that people are actually asking for. Here's us. Here is one, two, three. The first four posts are us. First four organic results are us. Uh, if anyone is looking for this service or this product in our market, uh, there's a really good chance we're going to be called first. We've already established that authority we're, we're linked to. So Google looks at us and says, okay, um, I will trust your content a little more and place you appropriately. 
So to your point, I completely agree. All right, any questions about that? Any questions about the Keyword Planner tool? No, good job. No. All right, next one. Uh, and once again, uh, if anyone has any questions about this, but they're too shy to, to ask them now, let me know. I'd be, or just contact me offline, send me a message, find me on Facebook. I'd be happy to go into any additional detail. Um, I want to make sure that we support our group as much as possible. So uh, if there's anything that I was uh, not specific enough about or, or too specific, uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy to, to, to try to uh, alleviate that. I want to quickly show you guys an example. Uh, or I guess, sorry, this is Google Analytics. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I have uh, two questions that, and you could figure out if you want to answer them on this call or, or offline. I don't know if you're going to cover them, but the two questions I, I wanted to hear to, uh, answered today were, um, what's your minimum level engagement <clears throat> for an SEO client and what do they get um, like we're at standard? And then um, what's the process that you follow? Like the, I could definitely see like... Um, when I learned core, running core for SEO specifically, because, you know, hey, we want to be found under this keyword, but then after running user profiles and, and we figure out that those aren't really the keywords we want to be found under. So minimum level engagement, what do they get for that? And then what's the process? For sure. Um, so what we found is we have a really easy time training people for, uh, for certain tasks. So our approach is very much going to be the mass market approach. Um, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to get Tina to post a link to our SEO packages um, on our website where we list the price. Uh, we had a conversation with Chris about this months ago, and he's like, that's ridiculous. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> I but, would never say that. No, but here's the thing. So we, for what we use SEO for, so just, I'm sorry, click on the SEO tab there. Um, so what we use SEO for is... Uh, to build a relationship with a client. Once we're doing some small amount of work for them, we become their port of harbor to, for, addition, for additional questions, for additional tasks, uh, and we get to suggest these things. So our minimum engagement, we're in a small market. We're in a city of you know, 150,000, 200,000 people. Uh, we're in a hyper-competitive space. For whatever reason, Kelowna has a ton. I'm sure other markets are the same way. Um, so we're price sensitive. Uh, but we work our way. So to, to answer your question very specifically, our minimum engagement is $350 a month or $345. Uh, our packages are between, uh, or this is one, this is the one for, for dental. Um, the, the other ones go up to $1,195 per month. So $1,200. Um, where, where I've found success or where I've found um, a really good way to grow is actually passive revenue. So these are clients who are in, I have someone who manages that relationship, does work for them that's visible. The results are very tangible and very much there, but we get so much additional work off of that. It's a little silly. So, so you're a loss leader then. You can it's, afford it's to definitely charge not a loss. It's definitely not a loss leader. We can put in, uh, so you know, there are a thousand things you can do. We prioritize the ones at the very top of the list. So at a three and a half or $350 engagement, we legitimately do 350, or sorry, three hour, three and a half hours or three hours worth of work a month. And we can still get really good results. Mm. And they look at it and say, okay, my business has grown in the last three months. Let's step up to tier two. Let's step up to tier three. And they can afford more. Mm. So we get to nurture those clients. So here is an example of one that we just launched a, about a month ago. Uh, it's a tiny little, it's in a tiny, uh, it's actually in uh, Tina's hometown of Nanaimo, BC. It's on Vancouver Island. They do garage door service. They've had a website for three, four years. We have, we can look at Google analytics for it and see exactly, um, up until we started working with them, they, they had spent thousands of dollars on Google ads. They had spent yeah thousands of dollars on getting the thing designed, hadn't brought a single lead in the week we launched, like literally two days after we launched we started getting, they got a call and it turned into to business. They're like, this is awesome. All of a sudden they're like, okay, let's go into, a, so I'll show you guys the results for them because this can work in a tiny little market in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's, it definitely works in larger markets. We work with real estate agents mm -hmm. out of Vancouver, which I'm not sure if you guys have any visibility into the Vancouver housing market uh, from, from the South, but it's been crazy. Um, so hey, Will, I'm going to interrupt you for a second for a commercial break here, okay? 
for sure. Here's your commercial break is, is Will and Tina are very polite. They're Canadian. We just know that about them. So Sean's question about your minimum level engagement is probably shocking everybody right now. And that's why you and I had this conversation a couple of months ago. Like That's it. So the first thing I want to say to this group is the reason why I want you guys to come on and speak and kind of host an episode is because I, I think there are some light bulbs going off in our audience right now. They may have a client or they might themselves be interested in doing this. I know that there are a couple of people here who do Google AdWords who pay a lot more than this. Uh, we're talking about thousands of dollars a month. And if you're as good as you present yourself to be, uh, not only can they benefit, but you can benefit too. So anybody that needs help with SEO for them for themselves or for their clients, I would highly encourage you guys to talk offline after this. And, and it's sounds to me like it's really super affordable and you wanna focus on your business and, and this is Will and Tina's sole business to help companies with SEO. Well, we also do some some really good web design and we do some really good graphic design as well. But yeah, I appreciate no, I appreciate the plug. So Google Analytics, uh, show of hands, who's used Google Analytics before? Perfect. One, two, three, four. Who under, who doesn't understand Google Analytics? Who wants me to go into it in depth? Perfect. I don't want to be the one guy. I mean, I okay. don't understand Google Analytics. I see all these graphs. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? Perfect. I'll High show you guys in. this one. Yeah, I'll show you this one. Um, Google Analytics has a ton of information. A in second thing. Perfect. Um, so Google Analytics has a ton of information in it. Um, some of it may just be too detailed. Uh, you may not get the value of it right away. Um, spend some time in Google Analytics. Uh, click around, see what you can find. There's some really, really interesting stuff that's going to teach you a heck of a lot about your clients, your potential clients, what the market is searching for, how they're going through your website, what they're looking at, where they're making decisions. Uh, you can put in conversion tracking so you can see, okay, this person clicked around, finally clicked on the call now button. You know what I mean? Like, what is their path? And then you can build that path out and say, Okay, this person landed on us, was convinced we're the right people, went to our portfolio because they looked at our work, went to our contact page, figured out we're in the right space, clicked on our contact button, gave me a call, bought a million dollar brand. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's that steady progression. And even if they're coming to you as a referral, like we, we hear this all the time. People are like, look, our business is completely referral based. No one's looking on the internet. Um, I beg to differ. And here's the results that we can show. Even though they know they've heard about you, the very first thing anyone does in 2016 is does a Google search. What are they finding? Are, they, are you representing yourself the way they expect you to? If they're not, you may, they may be getting to your website, um, landing on your homepage, and quickly navigating away. That's something called a bounce rate. Uh, if you think you're the best thing ever and you're getting a ton of referrals, maybe your website is actually a detriment to your business. Maybe they're finding you and they're like, this is not the guy who can make a million dollar brand for us. Let's move along. You know what I mean? Like there's a whole bunch of information that uh, a positive and a negative result can actually give you. And this is all visible from within analytics. Uh, Google search console. Uh, this one is this one just shows you uh, where you're ranking. And we actually have a tool internally. I'll show you guys. We've built out our own tool that connects analytics, search console, um, AdWords, um, and our time tracking system where we can build a report for a client that took us an hour or two before within about 30 seconds. I'll show you guys how it works in a second. Um, here's HubSpot Grader. So here is uh, what the highlight grade looks like. We're going to look up blind.com momentarily as well. I don't think anyone's going to be cavalier enough to share their Google Analytics, but if they are, I'd love to drill into it. Uh, if you want to share, just maybe share it with studio at highlight.com. Uh, if, there, if anyone's keen to show off uh, what their results are and we can see if there's any, any learnings that we can have from you it. You mean we have to show, share, send the password and all that stuff? No, no, you can actually share it. You can add me as a user oh, okay. uh, and then it's actually visible. Uh, I, that's I'll something that, uh, that you may not want to do. Uh, it's something that we do for a ton of our clients. Okay. So here is, here is this tiny little company called Alpha Doors. Uh, we see what their page authority and domain authority is. It's four and 17. So you can see that, uh, don't have my mouse for whatever it's. So you can see that on the screen. Um, that essentially means they're, you know, that seems like a really low score, 
believe us, it's really, really hard to get past 40. Never mind 50 out of 100 on domain authority or page authority. So this is where you look at links and say, okay, I know Huffington Post has a huge domain authority. If they link back to us, this clearly is a good link. It's going to help our credibility on the internet. And then we can actually measure, measure the results over time and say, just by getting that link, here's how many visits to our website we've had. And you can take a look into Google Analytics and show referral traffic. Um, so here we, uh, yeah, you know what? I will, uh, I'll pull up Google Analytics very quickly. I'll show, show it to you guys for Alpha Doors. So there we go. So here is Alpha Doors. So, and this, this is an example. We built the site and we spent literally three and a half hours of optimizing tags and adding some social media. And they went from, here's the kind of month over month. So literally a growth of 274% uh, in number of sessions. So people visiting the website. Uh, where they're coming from, we can take a look. So. Um, you'll see that I'll, I'm going to kind of navigate around here on the left hand side so you can see uh, audience. You can actually get a real time measure. So if anyone wants to navigate over to Alpha Doors, this is actually really good. Go to alphadoors.ca. Uh, Tina, would you mind showing? Just typing that in. If anyone wants to click on it, you can actually get real time results. So, say for example, you're running uh, radio ads, which are traditionally really difficult to measure effectiveness of. If you mention your website, you can actually see how quickly people, here it, is, here it is running, how quickly are people getting to the website? Um, are they even getting to the website? Do they care? What is the reach of this radio ad? What is the reach of this billboard that we've just purchased somewhere? Um, what is the reach of this magazine that we've launched in this market? Are people actually searching from it? There we go. We now have six results and we can see everybody who's, or eight people on the website. Who's, who's from Africa? That's awesome. Nine. There we go. So you can see very quickly, there are people who are on our website. Hey, someone's from Europe. There we go. Bristol. Um, so this becomes really cool where you can say, OK, uh, I just launched a, an AdWords campaign uh, in New York. How effective is it? You can actually launch campaigns for really small periods of time and say, uh, I know people are searching, you know, people are, are most active for the thing that we're trying to sell. They're thinking about branding uh, Monday morning. They thought about this all weekend. They're finally ready to make a move. Let's just pick a window in the States, you know, in, in the Eastern, in Eastern time zone for two hours from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Let's minimize that spend and then measure effectiveness. Are they actually getting to the website? What content are they consuming when they get there, right? Um, and then we can actually figure out what, uh, what technology are they using? Because that gives us insight into what uh, their behavior is. So I can see nine or 10 of you are on a desktop. One of you is on a tablet. If you were to open it on a phone, we could get that information as well. So if it's a radio ad, how often are we getting people who are driving in their car? If it's a service that we're marketing, that's, you know, that, that's, that's local. So this stuff is critically important to us. Uh, we can take a look at where the channels of info, where we can segment those channels and say how much of it is direct traffic. So people typing in alphadoors.ca. How many of it, how many of them are organic search? So organic search alone in the last month we've increased by 250 percent. Um, where they appear now within a very short period of time, uh, and this is one of the one of the pictures that I have in the slides coming up is at the very top. If you search for garage door service. I know it seems benign, but this is the bread and butter for this couple that's making a living off of this. And we've made a fundamental difference in their business. And that's a really exciting thing and you know, really happy thing for us to say. Um, here is the, search, the paid search results. So they were spending $500 a month before. Um, we have no idea where that money was going. Uh, there was some other company managing it. We're not sure whether those were fees. But in the last month, they had 33 clicks. And we can actually, so I don't think we have conversion tracking enabled for, the, for this client yet. We will in the future. Here are display ads. So not only those Google ads that show up at the top of search results, but we also show up in a whole bunch of different places across other websites. 
we're very targeted. We want to make sure that we you know, don't spend the client's budget in places or with, with customers that will never, ever call them. So we can actually prompt some sort of behavior. We kind of uh, separate advertising into responsive. So when someone does a search, let's respond, let's be there, and then proactive. So how do we get someone to think about this behavior? How do we get someone to start thinking for a uh, brand strategy company rather than a logo company, right? How do we make them, what platforms are they using and how do we get them to start thinking about these things? And then how do we measure that result? This becomes interesting. Um, social, uh, we're just starting there. So they didn't have a Facebook page before. So we're just starting it. We're creating noise. I'll show, I can show you guys another fun example of the hair salon. Um, that's a client that within the first year, we tripled their traffic. We tripled their revenue. They came back to us. They climbed through the tiers. They spend way more than that, you know, that, that tier three retainer that we just linked you guys to. Any questions about this? No. All right. Uh, here's something else that's interesting. Uh, this is one of, one of the other things that you can dig, dig deep into is uh, behavior flow or actually site content. What are people actually, uh, what are people looking at? How often are people looking at the homepage, uh, the services page? How often are we, is someone getting to a certain, there you go. Uh, here's the about us page. So we know that a whole bunch of people are navigating from, or we suspect they're going from the homepage to services to about us. Here's the gallery, here's some testimonials. Here's the contact page, here's the blog. Um, here is a blog post about our new website. But what becomes really interesting is watching the flow and seeing where the drop-off is. Let me just remove some of this inform comparative information to make this a little simpler. Here's how people are going. So if they land on the homepage, how many people are going through? And you can see uh, through traffic versus drop-off traffic. How many people are going to the, the gallery or the services page or the About Us page before going on to the next step or dropping off? So. We can say half the people, were, they're going to the gallery and then they're dropping off. What can we do in the gallery to improve that? What images, what design can we put in there where we can, where we can further convince them that we're actually the company that they should be calling for these kinds of services, right? So it gives us a little bit of visibility into that. So here, I'm gonna show you this uh, uh, plan B. Um, we occasionally get, well, we do a ton of their social media so here is the services page. I just wanted to quickly show you guys uh, kind of an overview of traffic. So we're in a tiny little market of 150,000 people. Uh, we had, yeah, 3,200 sessions uh, in the last month. What I always like to do is compare this to before when before we started working with them. So we started working with them. So time of time of year does will make a bit of a difference here. So I'm not trying to pull anything here. I just want to show you guys. How much traffic they they uh, how how or how their traffic grew kind of since we started working with them. There we go. So here is April to May of 2014 compared to where we are now. Will, what do you mean by sessions? What does that mean? So sessions is visits to the website. Um, so say okay. for example, you guys go to Alpha Doors. Uh, that counts as both a session and a user. So you can see that there are two numbers here. So you go to you open the website up, you get counted. If you come back within a month, uh, you show up as a second session. You show up as a returning user. So you can see here we have new users versus returning users. Uh, so you get counted once. So we can see it gives us a little bit of insight. How often are people coming back to your site versus making that decision once? So say for example they're they're pondering your million dollar uh, branding exercise. I assure you, they're agonizing over this. They're looking at multiple vendors. They're looking at multiple providers and saying, OK, how does this guy's work compare with our work? How does, uh, I don't know, his portfolio? And they'll scour your portfolio. And then you can actually see them traverse your portfolio. Uh, how often are they getting to the contact page? Maybe the information isn't intuitive on how we should contact them. There's an agency here that we, we keep looking at our competition. One of the ways they vet clients they're on the premium side of things. Uh, they actually, their, their contact form gives you, uh, here's my name, here's the project that I'm interested in, here's the budget that I have. And they actually say, look, it, here is you know, 
uh, the, the first one is like 10,000 to 25,000, 25,000 plus, or below 5,000. And it very quickly sets that, uh, sets that tone with the client and, and informs them. If you have less than 5,000 and we have all these other pricing tiers, uh, we're going to be more expensive than 5,000. Move along. Right? So it gives them a little bit of, like, that's where some of that additional information in your website helps communicate where you want to position yourself. Um, anyway, so that's just kind of an aside. Anyway, um, so here is this. Uh, you can get into conversions. You can look at AdWords, um, which, which campaigns are we running, how they're converting. Uh, there we go. So here's, here's how much we spent. Oh, we're running out of time. Tina's pointing to the clock here. Um, so I'm going to get back into the presentation. Does anyone have any questions about analytics? Yeah, I have a quick question. Dude. So much of this, I feel like it's just based around content marketing. Are you managing your client's content, the creation and the distribution of it? Or are you leaving that to them and giving them guidelines and then measuring that? Or how does that interaction happen? Because so much of this seems like it's content, which is normally the client's responsibility. You're absolutely right. So what we found is uh, we can give clients advice and direction all day long, 5%-ish. Uh, will actually have the capacity to do it themselves. Our goal, and we make it no secret, is we want to get you busy to the point working on your business where you're not going to have the time to write your own content. And you're going to come back to us and say, okay, I see what the value of this is. Can you guys do this for me? So for a company like uh, uh, Plan B, I saw your face light up when, uh, when I mentioned balayage hair or denim hair. Um, so... For, for us is we tried that. We tried giving them advice. Here's what you need to be blogging about. Here's what your social media looks like. Um, we actually interview their staff. We, uh, they, get a, they send us pictures. We scour through their staff uh, uh, Instagram pages and we reappropriate and repost things through their Instagram feed. So if you take a look at their, take a look at this. So, you're, so con like I mentioned, content marketing is a huge part of that SEO equation. It's not just here are some minor changes or here are some superficial changes, but here is the consistent set of changes and consistent uh, content that we're feeding to search engines to show up under the searches. So whenever we talk about a blog or a gallery, let's make sure we keep feeding content into it, but let's make sure that it's actually titled properly. That, that metadata that I talked about is there, uh, is there properly. So let's go back to plan B here. So if you take a look at the content that we've... Um, site content let me let me just get rid of comparative information here from the previous period and you can actually see um, that content that people are consuming and we can actually so here is 50 shades of fall autumn hair colors um, we have a writer who she used to manage a um, she used to manage a, a, a beauty salon before she got into marketing she interviews she does the writing actually she now assigns it to one of our multiple writers to do it. So if you take a look, 50 Shades of Autumn, autumn Hair Colors. So we could, agonize, we could send this to the client and say, here's what you need to be doing. Or we can spend the literally 45 minutes to an hour to write the blog, research and write the blog post um, and then post it. We charge them for the service. We build passive revenue, which gives us access to great writers and great designers. Uh, and then we can do other fun things with them. So there we go. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so you know, for, for designers, this could work. This could be a place where you get out of that boom and bust cycle uh, that a lot of designers are in, where it's like, hey, I've got a project. Things are awesome. Project is done. What do I do now? Let's get, let's let's find some more work. Okay. Yay. Project. You know, if you even that out and say, I have clients that in a month I get to do three and a half hours worth of design for them, um, that helps things. Oh, sorry, this is looking frantic. Um, that helps them and that helps you secure, uh, you know, secure design work into the future. Okay, uh, tools to run. So this is uh, kind of what I wanted to touch on. Uh, these are the tools that uh, this search console and analytics. Uh, we const I constantly run. This is what I do in the background before every client meeting. I go into I go into these things and say, okay, where you know are there any issues with your website? So I said I'd pull up uh, uh, HubSpot Grader uh, on Blind.com. Let's take a look. Let's see what the 
let's see what this is really at a snapshot, uh, kind of at a, at a glance. What can we do to improve your site? Um, are there performance issues? Because out of that list, this is perfect. Out of that list of 200 signals, some of them you're missing the mark on. And we can just look at this and say, look, it's not just me saying this. And I'm not trying to sell you better hosting for, for more money a month. I'm not trying to, look, your, uh, here, here, this is um, your performance. Your performance is actually not bad. Your mobile compatibility, and this is why you're upgrading your website, could use some work. Your SEO could use some work. Your security could use some work. Uh, these are all very simple fixes that we can implement. So here is, uh, there you go, your, your website uh, isn't responsive, or this tool doesn't believe it is. SEO, uh, there's a sitemap that's missing. Um, you can read you know, whether sitemaps are useful or not. It takes literally three minutes to generate a sitemap. In the off chance that it's slightly useful for some search engine that someone may be using, a potential client may be using, put it in. It's a very simple fix. An SSL certificate, um, Google came out a few years ago and said, look, uh, we're going to start rank ranking websites higher if they have this SSL certificate. Uh, and th they came out a few years ago and said, if your website isn't responsive or mobile, we're going to start down ranking you. So update your theme, update your website, problem solved. right? So very quickly, you can take a look that blind.com could use some work. Sorry, uh, I hope that doesn't. I hope that doesn't give you any. Uh, I was. I didn't mean, mean to put you on the spot. Oh no, you can never put me on the spot. I'm totally okay. If it came out score of one out of hundred, I'd still be okay. I'm all, all right. about growth. So no, sometimes absolutely. The medicine, so eh, sometimes it's hard to swallow. I just you got to swallow no, it. For sure. And, and but that's the thing for us. I wanted to give you guys some really simple tools where you can say, hey, what's the opportunity for the client here? Um, how can I you know, how can I show them that what we can do is you know. How I how I can contribute it as a, as a designer. Here is this image that I can do uh, that I can create. Write some words around it. Find the keywords and then show them how they're growing because that growth happens really really quickly. If it's it can be within a month or within three months. If you if they went from ten images describing their business to a uh, hundred bits of content that describe their business more effectively, uh, they'll start seeing that growth. Uh, that example, so I mentioned Alpha Doors. So we did the design uh, about, a, like I said, we launched it about a month ago. Um, the website looks like this. Uh, we're constantly changing that that information. So to your point earlier, Chris, you asked why does your website look different, or you said your your website looks different than it did before. We constantly change those sites. It's a tiny little bit of effort. We've built out our own WordPress themes to help us accelerate that. We can say, okay, we don't think the homepage is doing what it's supposed to do. I don't think there's a strong enough call to action. Let's add that. Uh, let's add keywords that specify, because what we learned for them is people are actually searching for Nanaimo garage door service. So uh, if there is any confusion about where this company provides their garage door service, we've fundamentally failed. And if Google looks at it and says, I don't know this, because you're not using the term Nanaimo often enough, uh, they're not going to rank you. So continual improvement, we, there's a blog section within the site. This is where we're going to keep talking about some of the services they provide and how they're better than the competition. Um, here is their uh, garage. So within a month, they are now organically uh, the very first map result. That's awesome. One of the things that communicates is reviews. So we're pushing them to get some Google reviews. So if you're a designer who shows up on a map and there are 10 other designers, how do you differentiate yourself? Get five of your clients, five of your favorite clients to give you a, res to, to give you a review. Always ask, what we always say is ask for a five-star review. Um, here's Google Analytics. So you, you, you guys just got to see those numbers. Um, I just wanted to jump into the conclusion because I wanted to stick to that 90 minutes. Uh, conclusion, so design smart. Just take a look at some of that information ahead of time. Uh, the language you use, the imagery you use, what you use to describe uh, that uh, is huge in the, in the search engine world, in the online world. Um, even if it's not in the online world, and if you're designing for print or banners or, or, or radio or whatever, whatever your form of creativity is, uh, use those keywords, listen for those keywords, research those keywords that people are looking for that they'll resonate, that, that'll resonate with them. 
you can measure those results. Uh, so design smart, run smart, grow fast, and design with SEO in mind. Uh, one last thing, um, this is one of those little lines that we always use with clients. We're, like I said, like in our little downtown area, within, I don't know, I'd say five, 10 blocks, there are 20 agencies doing the same thing that we seemingly do. Uh, so what we always say is we don't make just we don't just make beautiful designs. They can do that too, and their portfolio shows it. But our difference is that we make designs that work, and we make designs that convert and grow your business. Great Any job, questions? Will. So yeah. thanks for uh, this, is what I, this is what I get really excited about. So when, when this came up, I'm like. Let, let, let us show you kind of some of the things that uh, Tina gets design, really excited about design. I get excited about helping people grow their businesses. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. First of all, thank you for doing this. I found it to be super informative. I'm going to have to go back and watch the replay on this for sure. I just want to let you know, I did share our analytics with you in case you want to poke around there and sure. bring some insight to this group. But I've got a list of questions here, but I'm going to turn it over to our group to ask questions first. And Sean, you got to do something about getting a mic and a headset or something every time you're off. Just a lot of background stuff. Here it comes. It comes right back. I know every time you turn on your mic. Right actually, if you could turn down your volume, that would actually help because then there'll be less feedback. <clears throat> I just took uh, took out the HDMI cable. There we go. That that helped. Is that better? Yes. Much. All right. Um, any questions? I have tons, but who wants to go first? Can I sneak one in? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I've been asking a lot. Um, for the alpha door, did you end up, so, because it doesn't seem like there's too much content on their website, did you end up launching a lot of campaigns prior to their launch for the website in order to get them ranked so high? Nope. Uh, turns out, like, it's, they're, they're in a, uh, they're not in a hyper competitive space. They're, Got they're it. you know, that makes are, sense. Yeah, they're in a, you know, so we work with, uh, we work with uh, companies kind of, nationally or we can work with companies globally so we can look at them and say okay look you're not in a saturated market so the amount of effort we actually need to do this is relatively low and you should start seeing gains okay. fairly quickly uh, it's it get, becomes a little trickier and you know you ask the question about how do you set that expectation with clients uh, if it's in mm -hmm. a hyper competitive space and if everybody is doing seemingly the right things online that climb can be harder and we yeah. prepare the client for it and say look we're going to have to put a ton of stuff up, uh, stuff out there. We're going to have to take a look at what social medias were, um, launch some campaigns, and figure out how to best create content that converts. For your audience. Yeah. Then help you. you with that climb over time. Got it. I have a question. Yes. Uh, when I bring you in for a new client, what's your process with um, describing to them what you do? And then uh, since you have a monthly... A fee or a package that they sign up for. What do you do ahead of that um, monthly service, uh, as as far as time and information that you give them? For sure. Um, let me show you some. Uh, we we built our own tools. I think I mentioned this very briefly, um, where we put all this information together. Um, so uh, ahead of a client meeting, we do research. We we do a little bit of uh, a little bit of research on what their market is. Uh, you know what their um, uh, where they're positioned, what their comp competition looks like, uh, where they should be. So I'm informed about what they're doing. But what I typically do in in a sales meeting is say, look, here is a similar client that we've worked with. Here are the results that we've had. Here is the timeline that it took to get there. So let me show you Alpha Doors. So here we can very quickly, like I said, about you know 20, 30 seconds. This will populate with some information about uh, their traffic, their um, search ranking. So this is from that search console that I didn't show you. Um, a brief overview and then a checklist. So here are the results. This actually prints off as a proper PDF. Here are their AdWords campaigns. Um, here's their traffic. You can see that last month there wasn't any traffic, any measurable traffic in places. Um, here are where the results, what they're actually being found for. Here's a checklist. Hold on. This one may not. Oh, no, I didn't. So um, this one, we haven't put in our time tracking ID. So you can see it's blank here. But for a company like 
Let's go back to plan B. I'll show you guys what the checklist looks like for that one. So when we meet with a client, here's what we did for you. Here are the tasks that we did. And if they at any point, and clients are, you know, for, for, for these businesses or for some of these businesses, $350 a month is actually a lot of money. So they want to make mm -hmm. sure. So this one is seasonally down. Uh, I can show you guys some, I can, I can look into it, but uh, let me show you. Here are the things that we did for this client. So if they were to come to us at any point and say, okay, what exactly are you guys doing? Um, we added new photos to the gallery, published a blog post, 50 Shades of Fall, uh, did a feature stylist interview, did link building, we researched topics, uh, we updated the website gallery, uh, we call it the weekly Instagram creep and post where we pull pictures from their, from their staff. Sorry, I feel, I feel like I've kind of gone off on a tangent for you here. <laughs> no, you haven't at all. Uh, so do you charge for all this upfront research that you do before they get the monthly engagement? No, uh, no, we don't. Uh, if, yeah, uh, the barrier to entry yeah. would be prohibitive. Uh, yeah. We need to, and one of the things that we do, and this is one of the other things that Chris scorned us for, maybe rightfully so, is we don't actually get our clients to sign contracts. Uh, if we're not providing value, if we're not doing what we're supposed to do, if they're not seeing sales, like I don't want marketing to be a cost center. So we're trying to educate our local, local audience and say, look, if your other agency is just doing things for the sake of doing them and you're getting a bill, but your business isn't growing, come to us. Let us show you how we can do things differently and how we can help you grow. So you said educate your local audience. So I'm in Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. can you help my clients? Absolutely. That so, are out here. For sure. So I, I guess uh, I should just say educate our audience. Uh, the local audience is, okay. I guess, the audience that. Uh, so short answer, absolutely. Okay. Doesn't matter where they are. Mm. Absolutely. So same process for everybody. Same process for everybody. Um, we actually, yeah, we do Skype chats and video chats like this with clients. We should be using Fuse. It's a really good tool uh, with those clients. And, and uh, um, here is what we're seeing. Here are the results. Here's what we've done. Uh, just so they can actually see that there's, you know, this isn't just an algorithm. This isn't a shortcut. We're, we actually have people working on these things. And if you guys wanted to see the inside of our studio to see our writers or our designers, I'd be happy to show it off. Uh, here are people who are actually working. This isn't outsourced work to the cheapest bidder. It's actually people who have education and have training and marketing and, and design who are passionate about this. And this is how we can provide things better and faster. How many people are in your uh, company? I'm 12 right now. So right. I guess compared well, to I'm other sold. agencies, we're... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. If there's, yeah, like I said, if there's anything we can help with, absolutely. And if there's a way that we can figure out a way for you guys to make money, uh, if, look, if, if we're not just looking at the pie and dividing it up, where we're actually growing the pie, that's the best possible situation. Mm -hmm. Great. I have a few Great questions. Job. Thank you. So, yes, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, because we, we, uh, we sell SEO services or, uh, organic as well. We, it's not like our specialty. It's not like the thing that we, we focus primarily on. You, uh, I think, do a much better job than we do at it. Um, but one of the things that I tell clients uh, to kind of set expectations, and maybe I, I shouldn't be doing it, is um, telling them that getting you found first on Google doesn't guarantee conversion it doesn't guarantee that your phone's going to ring off the hook because i think a lot of times our clients come to us hey i need more business i need what that, that's what the the request is uh, so can you help us with search engine optimization and so they think that getting found first on google is going to make their phone go off the hook i if you type in you know web design clovis uh seo company clovis graphic design clovis because uh, that's where i live i'm you know first on in the rankings, but it doesn't mean that my phone's going off the hook all the time. I, I get a few form submissions every once in a while. Um, mm -hmm. It just means that you're found first on Google if and when someone does a search. Is that what you're telling clients as well? Because it sounds like it, I'm, uh, you're primarily selling not SEO, but you're selling uh, the, the fact that you're going to help them grow their, their business and increase their business. We uh, we use SEO, and this is kind of what I've been advocating. You know, as as one of the many tools in our marketing tool chest, right? Um, we can help get you to be number one. Uh, 
but if they're getting to your site, and this is maybe you know where where I'd implore you to take a look at your analytics and say, look, if I'm driving a hundred people to my website and I'm not getting a single phone call, uh, you're probably you probably don't have a compelling enough reason for them to call, um, or there's something that's scaring them off and they're navigating away. So take a look at your bounce rate, right? So it's it's. You know, SEO is the, you know, here is that optimization part. You're number one in, in rankings. But what does that actually mean? Like, how, what do you do with that traffic afterwards? Um, we often say in meetings, like, you know, we can hide, we can, we can do really effective marketing for bad companies. But if they're not providing a good service, you're very quickly going to find that out. Um, right. Or if they're, you know, if their equation, if their conversion equation isn't right, you're very quickly going to find that out. Uh, you know, look at your analytics. If people are getting to your site and it looks like they're the right people because they're in your market, they're doing the right keyword search, uh, and then you're not getting any phone calls, play with your messaging. Play with your with your content on your website. Play with the words and, and the phone number. Sorry, I'm getting the roll along, move along motion here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean, what's your second question? I got my five questions and I want to... Used okay. To... Second question was, uh, it seems like it's, um, it, it, this is really effective for local uh, SEO uh, as opposed to nationwide recognition. And is there a difference between uh, clients that are coming to you saying, look, look, I don't really want to be found just locally. I have this product that I want to sell online and I want to, to, to open up to the United States. What, what do you, what does the conversation look like for the client at that point? The conversation uh, is much the same, um, surprisingly much the same. Um, we work. Uh, there's uh, the one of our clients is a payday loan company. Uh, however, you feel about payday loan companies, they're much derided up here, uh, you know, or predatory uh, predatory loans or whatever. Uh, their their business primary is almost completely online or is completely online. They actually have one brick and mortar uh, brick and mortar location, um, but the service they provide has to be relatable uh, and has to be and has to answer some sort of question. So what we've done, so we did a number of SEO, um, I wouldn't say tricks, but essentially we used a number of SEO tools uh, and helped increase their ranking by 20% within a single month. Uh, and you know, 20% doesn't sound like anything, but it went from uh, you know, 20,000 to 22,000. And then the next month there was another 20%. And the next month there was another 20%. So for the first three months, we're like, look, here are the, the changes that we want to make, uh, and then we can show off those results. So that can work for you know, an online payday loan company, but that should also work for um, you know, shoe retailers or, or makeup retailers or um, people selling uh, memberships or, or um, you know, uh, subscriptions to anything. I, I'm sure it does. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So, so if, if a client is um, there, what if they're like getting off the ground, like the, it's a pretty new company, they don't have 20,000 impressions. They, they have, they say, look, I'm open to a website redesign. I just want to get, uh, start the, the ball rolling to uh, increase my rankings is mm -hmm. the strategy then to uh, have a content uh, marketing plan to where every month we're going to put out X amount of content for you in hopes to, to build up your SEO rankings. Short answer, yes. Uh, for us, that's the passive revenue equation. So we try to suggest that to every single client. Look, we can design a really great website. We can do all of that research. So figure out what keywords, uh, what keywords would work or where you should actually place, uh, what would likely convert. But then we use that content marketing equation and we also use pay-per-click and, uh, and, and banner ads and whatever else uh, as a way to increase that and say, look, let's, uh, let's accelerate this so even though you're starting at the very beginning like no one if you say for example you're a new shoe retailer uh, people aren't going to be looking for shoe retailer and if they are they're going to get the established incumbents um, so let's short circuit that equation and uh, run some tests on a local market and say okay let's start off with some random town where we know that there's a, a community of runners let's see what we can do to resonate with them Let's run some tests. Let's see what words are actually going to work. Let's run Facebook ads and see how effective they are in driving traffic. Um, when we get a kind of a critical mass, we can actually say, we know that we're driving them, but they're not converting. What are the, what, what's our learning from this? What can we change? Let's put additional products into our gallery. 
let's add videos of what the products look like. Let's uh, uh, play with price point. Let's play with um, shipping rates. Let's play with a whole bunch of different, we have so many levers that we can pull, uh, which ones are gonna resonate with that audience. You know, we have educated guesses on it, but we can do split tests and A-B tests and smoke screens and a whole bunch of other uh, tests that help us figure out what's actually gonna work. All right, thumbs up. Okay, last question from anybody before I do my rapid fire, kind of my five questions for Will. Anybody? Going once, twice. Okay, Will, my first question for you is, do you have more business than you can handle currently? Yes. Okay, so what are your challenges then? Um, the challenges are definitely growth. Um, I'll try to be really quick about answering these. Uh, challenges are actually, um, finding the right people. Uh, we've iterated through a bunch of equations on who the right kind of person is. Um, and I think we've actually arrived at an equation that's going to be far more scalable. Um, so I think that you know, what our challenge is now is going to be very different than it will be in two or three months from now. Okay. So you're getting a ton of business and you need warm bodies because you can train people, right? You said this earlier, what you do isn't, isn't magic. You can train somebody so you can do a turnkey system where it's passive revenue for you. Exactly. It's it not not to say that it's you know it's easy passive revenue. It's right. just uh, there there's a level of management and process. oversight that's required. Absolutely. Yeah. You have a well defined process that can be taught to other people. It's not like trying to write a uh, tagline, which is very hard to train other people to do. For sure. Okay. The second question is price points. You mentioned earlier on that it's uh, at the bottom. It's three fifty. Uh, what's the top? Is it eleven ninety five, or is it more than that in terms of a far monthly more, retainer? Uh, far more than that. So it completely okay. depends on uh, on the client and their price sensitivity, and we try to suss that out in our in our in our sales meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we one of our clients, for example, is uh, we our retainer clients is the local museums. So the museum society has five museums here. We do all of their marketing. Uh, their marketing retainer in their equation. They actually had a marketing contractor um, who wasn't effective. Uh, he was a writer, but he wasn't a graphic designer. So we came in, uh, we saw this opportunity, and we said, look, here is our resume as highlight. Uh, we can displace your contractor, and for the same price, you get access to our entire team. Uh, and they've been with us for a year and a half and are thrilled with our results. So how much is that? Um, that one is over 3000 a month. Okay. So what would you be comfortable with in terms of people in this group are now thinking a little differently and they might be thinking, oh, let's, let's bring in highlight to help. So there's a couple of questions that if I'm one of those people, I'm going to ask it for the group, maybe for myself too. Uh, what's a comfortable number for us to be throwing around our potential clients, shared clients to bring you on board? What's a good number for us to be talking about? For sure. Um, for us, what we what we're really interested in, and and that three and a half, you know, three hundred and fifty or twelve hundred uh, a month breaks down to essentially that many hours. So our studio rate is one hundred and ten an hour. Um, so it ends, it's like three and a half hours. Can we make a meaningful change in that? Uh, there's a le level of intuition that you gain over time and say, you know, I think we can drive change and monitor everything we need. So to answer your question. Uh, if you think this is going to be, you know, an, an, an optics exercise, they want to get out consistently on social media, um, and it's only going to cost, you know, it's only going to take us five hours. You can quote for that however you want and say it's going to be five hours for highlight time, and then um, two or three hours for my time at your hourly rate. So you can say, you know, here is our our, our offering for eight hundred or seven hundred or five hundred. Mm -hmm. And just well, so you, know, you guys know, you guys are also in the States and your dollar is at a completely different level than ours. Right. So I, I just want to be a little bit more prescriptive about this. If Sean or let's say Ben Burns wants to go out and sell SEO and your services, what's a good amount to start in terms of just your hours for a, a typical client? Should he say six hours to start six hours a month or should he say 12? Should he say three? What, what should he say? We're, we're typically, uh, ours are like our, I guess, best place for price sensitive clients would be tier two. So seven and a half hours, seven and a half hours. Yeah. Perfect. We can make a meaningful change to a lot of businesses in that little of an effort or that little time. On you a guys are very basis. efficient. 
we really need to be. Okay, great. And then it's up to them to, to then say, just for whoever else is listening to this replay later on in the broadcast, is then take those seven and a half hours, add your time to it or mark up the rate, whatever. As long as yep. Will has money to work with, he can help you make meaningful change. So sure. another question for people might be, and I'm not considering this, but somebody might be, is are you willing to work as a kind of a white label service under whatever company here in LA or wherever? Short answer, yes. A long answer, there is a ton of value for to, to meet with the client. Um, so like the insight that I gain about the kinds of services you're planning to offer or your product differentiation is huge. Uh, and that's often lost when we're playing a game of telephone, right? So what you learn from your client, uh, the way you're interpreting it is going to be through your lens. So what you're going to distill down to us may not be as effective as it would be if we met with the client. I'd love to be an iPad on a table somewhere where I can listen into the conversation mm -hmm. and then I can come back with, uh, with recommendations and say, look, our experience and here is, you know, our recommendations are, here is the, you know, content marketing approach. Here is the paper, uh, paper click approach. Here is the social media. Here is some print that I think would be effective. Here are some rack cards. Here is some signage that I think would actually work in your market because I was able to do a walk down uh, Google Maps and see what that looks like. Right. Um, or, heck, hey, heck, if there's enough money to for you guys to fly us around, uh, we love us to travel. So, yeah. Okay. I, I can see that happening in the future. So my thought here is that we're an agency, so I, I don't really feel the need to white label anybody. I just, like, we bring people together. We, we, we bring best of breed. But I ask because some of our members are a lot smaller they're one or two and they might feel threatened to bring you in and say well i'm going to bring you my client and all of a sudden next thing i know they're highlights client but i see a lot of value in bringing you uh into the meetings on the calls and not just having you just listen but to be a, an active participant so i guess i was asking the white label question on behalf of them in that mm -hmm. they can say look my, our partners in this is will but he's like a, a consultant to us not like will is a highlight because that For there's sure. some sensitivity uh there no, for sure. Uh, so uh, this is, you know, this can this can easily be solved with a good contract or mm -hmm. or you know an agreement where we can say, look, we're not going to steal your client. Um, for us, there is a hell of a lot of value in building great relationships. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, to to steal a single client doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I'd far rather build a great relationship with you know with agencies like yours or any one of you guys, uh, and say, look, here's how we can help you look great in your market. Uh, I mentioned there are 20 agencies in our little downtown core. Uh, a lot of them are doing well. There's enough business to go around. And a lot of them actually focus on business that's outside of our kind of local market. Mm -hmm. uh, we can work anywhere. And this is maybe the beauty of what we do in 2016. Right. Perfect. Last question for you from me is um, how do you, do you, have you started to figure out how you charge? based on value versus time because you know one of my goals is to get x number of members in our group to hit the million dollar mark right i could easily see you changing that conversation around you know what because to me the the hourly rate is nominal even at a gigantic amount of hours if you say you know what you're a 35 million dollar business if we move the needle x percentage points i want a piece of that and I'm willing to invest X or give it to you at a certain price, as long mm -hmm. as I get a piece of the difference. A lot of people negotiate this way. Yeah. So, um, so can you just repeat that question again? I'm just yeah. going to repeat that question again. Have you again. been able to, or have you thought about charging for value versus time? Um, definitely. Um, and we, we have, uh, in certain places charged for value, but that's not where we're like, that's not where we're particularly strong or that's not really where we want to be uh, or short for certain things we want to be there for design, for example, for Tina, she's a absolutely amazing designer. So this is where we're starting to charge for that value and say, look, any other designer would, so you know this equation, uh, but um, for us, it's, there's a lot of value to having this relationship. So it's not just a single shot where it's going to be $20,000 for us to make our changes. You may or may not see results. Let's break that down into increments where we work with you and, and, and grow that out. And we want to grow our team. 
and yeah, and we also want to grow our team to be able to provide you know more services to more clients and more markets. Right. So I can tell you're really smooth about answering all the questions, except for when I came up to this particular question. All of a sudden I saw you like, oh, it's a little slippery. I'm, oh, I'm walking on I ice. Was, I just, no, no, it was a teen, uh, one of our clients just walked in. Tina, Tina got a message that the client is here. Oh, okay. Uh, this was, I will be there as quickly as I possibly can. Okay. <laughs> so the value thing, we've definitely thought about it. Um, we've started doing it in certain places. It's not been our, it, it, it hasn't been an equation that's worked well for us in our small market. I'd yeah. love to reattempt this in a larger market. Absolutely. You should. You definitely should. And you'll be making, you'll be adding two zeros to your price. Okay. And here's what I think. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to help uh, wrap this up and put a button on this because you got to get going. I really appreciate your time. Here's how I think of this. Well, if I approach a client and said, you know what, you're doing really well, but I can help you do much, much better. So if this is your revenue today, I think it's going to be here. And if you're willing to do this, I'll even pay for this SEO stuff and you'll see the results and conversions then I will go and hire you guys, pay you whatever out of my own pocket, and I'll negotiate with the client. I want to make 10% of the difference. That's how I negotiate value. This has nothing to do with graphic design. If I improve your business by X percent, I want 10% of that. And I know people who do this for in a number of different kind of management consulting spaces or sales. If we increase sales by X, we're going to take this percentage, or I'm going to get everything off a of baseline. So you establish what the baseline is. And if we increase it by this, we're going to get the, that money. So just think about that. And that's probably a different kind of call. And I want to thank you on behalf of everybody for doing this call. I love this. I can envision a future soon to come, an event where we fly you guys in and Sean Henry and other people from our group. So I want to encourage everybody that's got something to share to get your act together, to host one of these calls with me, because I can see a really cool conference of school pro members coming in together to share the knowledge. And with that, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I just really wanted to, yeah. Thanks everyone. Uh, you guys have been fantastic. Uh, and the knowledge and, and information that we've, and tools that we got out of this so far have, have been phenomenal. So thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to wrap the call now and stop recording.